Wait, good morning. How are we doing today? Yeah, yeah, that's, that sounds good. Man, good to see you guys. We uh, kicked off a talk last Sunday on Father's Day, and I got into it, and I was talking about being strong, living strong. And uh, as I begin to think about that, I'm like, man, this, this will work for a little bit. I think we need uh, encouragement in this area. How many of you ever get scared to do something? Rest of you lying? Okay, yeah. All right. Well, today we're going to dig into this a little bit. We introduced the subject and we were looking at the story of Abraham out of the book of Romans last week. And you remember that the Bible says that God did something with Abraham. He made something out of Abraham when he was nobody. Yeah? Uh, And the thing is, he did this. And Romans is very clear in this. He did this because Abraham dared to trust God to do what only God can do. Now, I know many of you are probably like me. You can handle stuff. You know, how many, uh, how many of you other than Paula are control freaks? Yeah, these two right here. Oh, yeah. I don't know. The Lord has sent me several people that have control issues and, and, uh, and, you know, and, and the thing is, learning to let go of some of that and actually trust that God's going to work things, he's going to orchestrate everything out. Now, not that we don't do things, but there are times when you have to chill out. This is one of the things I talked about last week. I believe that the society that we live in today, they need to see a church. Now, understand, we, we do need to have boldness. We do need to be strong. We do, we do need to have a voice. But you know what they need to see in us? Stability. They need to see that we trust God when everything is going on around us that doesn't look like it's going to work out right. See, Abraham dared to believe in what God said, that what God could do for his life based solely on the word, what God told him. And he didn't waver at God's promise. Watch this. And because he didn't waver, the book of Romans tells us this, that Abraham was strengthened in his faith. See, this is the thing. When you hear a talk like this, when you spend time in your devotion with the Lord, when you go to the word, your inner man begins to grow stronger. And what happens as your soul is transformed and your mind gets in line with your spirit, the next thing you know is you find yourself being a better representation and expression and ambassador of the Lord. And it's not, it's not out of some work, religious, legalistic approach. It's not out of some have-to mentality. That's who you are as a person. <clears throat> you are being transformed into the image of God. And, and I believe that the Holy Spirit is still looking. He's still calling. He's still inspiring people today to continue to grow stronger in their faith. To actually live strong. See, you can get to this place where, regard, and, and God knows right where you're at. I think sometimes when we, I know as pastors, when we put these sermons together, you know, we, we, we want people to come into our bubble because we, well, we, on the surface, we, we live for God. But in the real world, you know, we play golf and we work on stuff and we break stuff and we do dumb stuff and we make our wife mad and Your wife make you mad too? Yeah. My wife never makes me mad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, it, God knows right where we're at, and he realizes that you are busy people. He knows that we can easily be distracted. We have families. We have careers, etc. And so he gives you these opportunities like today to come set under the word. And so come with faith today. Expect the Holy Spirit to speak to you, to strengthen, to remind you, to encourage you. You are strong in the Lord. You can do this. This is why Paul makes statements like this in in our journey of faith. Like in Galatians 6, he said, don't get tired of doing what's good. You will, listen very carefully, you will reap a harvest of blessing if you don't quit, if you don't give up. But man, we live in a quit society. I remember I was probably, I don't know. I mean, I was a teenager, young teenager, because when I was an older teenager, well, you all know my testimony, I was not good. That's what I love about what Andy and Kate and Billy and Annie do with our teenagers, the, the, the time and investment they pour into them, you know, and, and they go to a, 
to, to the backside of some podunk nowhere on the planet to change your kid's life for a season. And they work hard. So I'm, I'm glad y'all are here today. I've been sleeping today. You know, I mean, let's, Andy is getting old, you know. <laughs> I can say that because I'm still older than him. Y'all can't say that, right? Yeah, right? But as we invest in people, you know, and you continue to do good, you don't give up, you don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. Man, it's so easy anymore these days. Oh, you don't like your job? Quit. I hear people all the time complain about Toyota. They make more money than 90% of the people in this community, and you gripe about it. Quit. Oh, no, I can't go anywhere else. Then shut up. Oh, I got in trouble for saying shut I got in trouble a few weeks ago for saying the S word. Remember that? My, my, my little niece, grandniece got, she told on me. Her mom said, uh, we don't say that at our house. I'm like, duly noted. Yeah. <laughs> don't quit doing good. You will reap a harvest. And then he says this in Ephesians. Paul, once again, encouraging the church in, in chapter six, he says, be strong in the Lord. And in his power, not in your own abilities. See, as you yield to the things of God, sometimes you'll step out to do things and it'll be uncomfortable on your flesh. You won't want to do it. There are things that I have to do as a pastor that I don't like to do. Right? Shocker. I know y'all thought, man, you know, you're in the presence of the Lord and it's just whatever happens, you're just walking on the water, man. No, no. I have uh, real people that I have to deal with. (laughs) Yeah. So us being strong, accomplishing the things that we have from the Lord to do, whether it's your career. For many of you, listen, guys, he's not, God's not asking you to change your career. See, like Abraham, God came to Abraham and he said, Abraham, I want, I want you to leave everything that you know. I want, to leave, I want you to leave your old way of living and step into something new that I'm going to show you. Well, what, what is it, Lord? I'll show you. Where is it? I'll show you. See, this is the thing that God wants us to see. He wants us, many of us, to leave our old way. Even if you're born again, wonderfully saved, you can quote the, the scriptures left and right. There are things in your life that he will want you to leave behind to step into the new that he has for you. But he's not going to give you three steps and a a conclusion of this. He's not going to give you a, a, you know, a a John LaBuglio uh, layout sheet. (laughs) He's going to tell you, it's this place I want you to trust me in and just follow me. Yeah, but we don't like that day. That's not. See, the thing is, if God were to show you everything he had for you, I'm going to show you a guy today out of the Bible. That if God would have showed him, matter of fact, God did come and tell him and he still said nothing. You got the wrong guy, but we'll get, we'll get to that in a second. See, my point for you today is this. I want you leaving here with this reality. You are getting stronger. You are getting stronger. Every time you yield to the things of God, every time you make time for God. See, God is the almighty so he knows that in our small created self that we are, any time we give with him, he's like a dad. He's like, oh, that's, that's my boy right there. He's proud. You know what God, Trevor, you know what God likes? He loves to see a, a spiritual development book on the back of the toilet. <laughs> oh, just a few of you got that. So you don't, you don't read at the porcelain throne? No. Okay. Tough crowd today, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, we'll just let that go. Y'all should, um, listen, that's quality time, man. You could read it. <laughs> yeah, right? Just sitting there, you know, I have an opportunity. See, God knows where you're at, and he is grateful. Now, listen, he is when you make time for him. And one of the things that you see very clearly through the scriptures is when you follow the, the, the elders, the patriarchs that we study after, man, you see that God, when, when, when they would step out and follow God, he would bless them. He would empower them. He would make them stronger. Can we just take a little bit of time and review what we touched on last week out of the book of Joshua? You remember Joshua? We talked about this. Maybe you weren't here last week. We, we talked about Joshua and how Joshua had just taken over for Moses. So Joshua is the new leader, the new pastor for the largest congregation on the planet. And he's supposed to lead them into the promised land. 
Now, God had promised the land years ago to the previous generation. You remember the spies went in and looked at it? Joshua was one of those guys that went in and looked at it, said, we can take this, let's go. But the majority of the people said, we can't do it. Because they looked in the circumstances, they looked at the obstacles that they were facing and said, there's no way we can do that. They didn't trust God. And so now here Joshua is. Not only is Joshua trusting God, but God knows he can trust Joshua. And so he says this, Joshua 1, 6, be strong. Why would he start out with this? Be strong and of good courage for this people you shall divide as an inheritance in the land which I swore to their fathers to give you, this promised land. Now, let me take a second. Cody, you got your big Bible. Let me borrow that for a second, man. Man, I could, what if I got down here and just, man, wouldn't that be, but, the, but my cameras probably won't be able to get me down there. See, I'm not even on the, yeah. I'm just going to need this for a second. You'll have to come get it, but. I mean, that's, I could do curls with that thing, man. That's a serious Bible. Yeah, be strong. Here's the thing I want you to get out of this, this point today. Just like the Lord told Joshua, be strong and of good courage because I'm going to lead you into this promised land. The promised land was based on what God had told his people. This book right here is the promised land for you. See, if you'll take the time and and stop looking at this as some religious thing, stop looking at it as a decoration for your coffee table, and you will take the time to let this change the way you think, you'll begin to see the promised land just like God, God sent the 12 to spy out the land. God will show you promises in here that will change your life. But the thing is, you're still going to have to be strong and of good courage and trust him to step out and do things that may not make sense. Sometimes, John, you have to leave everything you were used to to come to this little town and and flip your world upside down and then buy a house you don't even know that you're supposed to buy until God said buy it. See, there are promises, but if you don't have the assurance of this word solid in you, there's no way you'll be strong. Here you go, Cody. So my encouragement today, thanks, buddy, is take the time. One of the things we do with our U version. Uh, notes is make this stuff available for you so you don't even have to dig deep. You could just go pull this stuff and meditate on it. Verse 6, be strong and of good courage. Verse 7, only, say only. only. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the, the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Don't turn from the right or the left that you may prosper. How many of you want to prosper? But he says that you have got to do things according to the law of Moses. Well, in the new covenant, we do things according to the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. We're we're delivered from the law of Moses. We have a new covenant today. Now, of course, you all know I quote Joshua 1.8. This is the Joshua 1.8 principle. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. In other words, God's word. But you will meditate in it. When? When? Is he for real? Doesn't he understand that you're busy? You got a career? You got kids? You got softball, soccer, dance? I mean, they keep kids busy these days. Too busy, yeah. And so God knows these things. So is, is he telling you that you've got, you've got to commit your time day and night? It's a lifestyle. I want to encourage you. Some of you all, you should start your day with the word of God. I don't care if it's just one scripture. Start your day that way. Well, I don't really have time. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. No, no, no. I'm not buying that. Especially if you spend the last 20 minutes scrolling social media before you. Anyway, now no condemnation here. You got to work your own junk out. You understand that? God's not mad at you, but he's here today to to encourage you. This book of the law shall not uh, depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do. See, it's not just the hearer. It's not just the knower. It's the doer that you may observe to do all that's written in it. And then you will make your way prosperous and have good success. You will. So have I, in verse nine, God, he's still talking to Joshua here. Have I not commanded you be strong, be strong. This is the thing that we have to understand today. God's with us. Be strong, don't be afraid, don't be dismayed. That word dismayed, don't be distracted by things that are of no importance. 
Don't be distracted by other people's opinion. For the Lord is with you. You see, for us today, becoming a Christian, being people of God, it's not, I want you to get this today. It's not just receiving passage to heaven. I can't tell you the number of <clears throat> Christians that I talk to that they want to live their own life and do their own thing. As long as I get to heaven, I'm good. And I, I mean, I talk to people all the time that that's all they want. They just want Jesus to be the entrance policy from hell. And he will. He loves you that much that he will. But what he's looking for is this group that will accept this new life and be intentional about it. When you have a window of, of opportunity, God will set the stage for you if he knows you'll follow through. See, you understand Romans 8 is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. and It is so powerful and so full of revelation. The Bible says that the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are the heirs of God, that we're joint heirs with Christ. And then he makes this statement in verse 19. And all of creation, you got to get this, all of creation waits expectantly and longs earnestly for the, for the sons of God to be made known. You see, guys, humanity is God made. Even if they don't agree with it, even if they don't like it, they're still, they'll fight it with everything they can to prove that it's not for today. But nonetheless, they are still God made. And by design, when the sons and daughters of God step forward and be who they're called to be, because humanity's made that way, God will orchestrate opportunities. He'll put a, he'll put a neighbor, he'll put a coworker along your path. He'll set things up because you'll go drop the truth in their life. Not denominational philosophies, not a bunch of religious junk. You, you'll go sow the kingdom of heaven in their life. See, this is what the world is, they're long, the reason they're screaming and striving so hard to find something to fill that void in their life is because they're God made. The enemy just has them deceived. Deceive. The apostle Paul says that he has blinded their eyes so that they can't see clearly. But guess what? Guess what helps you see clear? Light. And you are the light of the world. So go be light. You don't have to, you don't have, to have a bunch of sermons written out. Tell your story. I know everybody's story is not as, as radical as mine, but that doesn't mean anything. The best story is, you know what? I was in Andy and Kate's youth group since I've been in, uh, before that I was in chi children's church. I, I, was in, I'm, I don't know anything but church. That's awesome, man, to be able to sit down. You should be one of the most confident ones on the planet. And you can sit down at a Starbucks and have a conversation with somebody. And listen, not try to prove them wrong, not try to impress them with your junk. Just drop a nugget of the truth. Be led of the Lord. They're looking for this stuff, man. I'm telling you, if everybody in here would be strong and courageous and live strong and go drop those nuggets of truth when God says, go tell them about me. Yeah. But we don't. This is what we do. Lord, is that really you? Uh, Lord, there's other people in the room. They may think something about me. They already think something about you. All right. I remember one time Trevor sent me a picture. There's a, a person at court and the judge is sentencing them to jail and they got a victory life shirt on. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, here we go. They're witnessing, the, they're witnessing in jail. That's what. <laughs> See, they already think something about you, okay? Yeah, people already have uh, opinions and views about you. With stuff. So what God is looking for is for you and me. So you come in here for one reason, to get inspired and stirred up so you can go out there and be. Be what? Be strong. Live strong. See, just like Joshua, there's going to be plenty of opportunities for you to exercise your faith. You just got to, man, you got to get to the place where you trust God, that you are the heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. But you know what Paul says about the heir of God? He says the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different than a slave, even though he's master of all. See, you have the power and the authority inside you. You just don't know it because you haven't had enough transformation in the way you think to embrace who you really are as a born-again person of God. That's why Paul says, guys, don't think of yourself more highly than you are. Because when you start getting the revelation of who you are, man, all of a sudden your shoulders get back. You get a little more confident about yourself and you're ready. You're out there. You're looking for a coworker to come in the break room. You know, gutter mouth that works, down, you know, that, works in that different department. 
Yeah, hey, where are you going? No, I'm just, I'm just playing. <laughs> I wouldn't do I wouldn't do that Natalie I would I only I love you I wouldn't do that to anybody like did he gonna call me out no I would never <laughs> no she's 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 been with us a long time so I can cut up with her <laughs> I've been waiting on an opportunity to get her <laughs> yeah so like we said last week and, and I want to repeat this because so often here's one of the things we do the reason that we we are hindered in our strength, in our confidence. It's because many times what we do is we, we talk the negative. We entertain the worst case scenarios. Yeah, but what if God doesn't come through? Huh? Stop. Can I take it a step further? Stop living just to avoid failure and disappointment. Well, I, I, I don't want to be disappointed. I'm not going to try that again. No, no, no. You, you need to try it. Sometimes you need to be willing to just embarrass the heck out of yourself. I do it pretty much every Sunday up here. Yeah. You see, you're born again. You're born from heaven. So I want you to stop thinking. I want you to stop saying, I can't. There's no way out of this situation. I've messed up too many times. See, for some of you today, and we're still re just reviewing, but, but this is, you, I know everybody doesn't get this stuff. Stop looking at what you're not. What's that mean? That means I got to stop looking at somebody else to determine who I am. You've got to stop. I'm t but today's society, we, we're programmed to compare. Stop that. You're God made. The Apostle Paul, God tells him, he says, Paul, my power, it works best in your weakness. When you get to the place where you know it's me working in you. See, like Abraham, Abraham had this total reliance on God. And we're made in his image, in his likeness. So he knows, I want you to get this today. He knows that we can do the things he leads us in. Before he leads us in them. You got that? He knows you can do it. But sometimes us living strong, it's not in our strength, it's in his. This is why Paul says things like, stand fast in your faith. And be brave and strong. You see, sometimes we just need to be reminded that as we grow stronger in Christ, there's going to be times in our life that, that what he's asking us to do it's going to contradict everything humanity is screaming. It's not going to be comfortable for you. Like I said earlier, see, God, God he's not asking you to uproot your life, to, to change your career. He's not asking those things. What he is asking is to be on your game where you're at. See, if every one of us had the switch of faith on and we were ready to engage when the Holy Spirit said that one right there, get them. You know, and he doesn't mean go tackle them. He just means... Be led spiritually and say what needs to be said and then leave them alone. Don't follow them around harassing them. No. Once you invite them to church one time, shh. Leave them alone, man. Let the Holy Spirit work on them a little bit. I mean, we'll wear people out sometimes, won't we? It's like a, you know, it's like one of those car salesmen at a used car lot. Now, no, now nothing wrong with car salesmen. I got friends that are car salesmen. But, man, they're aggressive. You know, what if we were that like, well, what can we do to get it done today? What can we do to get you in heaven today? Let me make a good deal with you, huh? <laughs> no, right? No. Uh-uh. See, we, we can't. Here's the thing, guys. God is looking for us to be willing to step out. But one of the things you have to be open to is this. We can't keep doing the same thing expecting a different result. Doesn't work like that. Let me show you this out of Hebrews. This is out of Hebrews 12, and this is the uh, G version paraphrase, okay? But it says this, keep your eyes on Jesus, whom both began and finished this race that we're in. Watch this, study how he did it. And when you find yourself slipping in your faith, go over the story again and again, item by item, and it will shoot adrenaline into your soul. 
You see, the power of the gospel, when you study the life of Jesus and you talk about the life of Jesus and you study the life of Jesus and you talk about the life of Jesus, what happens is it, it begins to charge your inner man and your soul begins to change. And you find yourself, oh, yeah, I can. I am. Let's go. Yeah. It's, it's probably like when those kids, especially the new ones, when they first get to camp, they're like deer in headlights because camp is crazy. You know, they're wild. And they get them all jacked up on sugar and all. But, right? Yeah. But when they first get there, they're like, whew, they're kind of, they stand off and they're just, you know, it's all new to them. But by the end of the week, they're a different person. See, this is how God is with us. He knows that we're going to be these resistant, kind of hesitant, kind of slow people. To get. But once, once you're in, that's why talking these things over and over. This is, why, this is why I tell some of the same stories. This is why I, I'm limited in my realm of talk because a lot of times I got to stay on the same things. I'm like, God, give me something really deep and theological. Because I do study that stuff. But how's that going to help you in the break room on a Thursday afternoon? And, this is, and that's what, this is what he tells me. No, you tell him this again. And then you tell him again. I'm like, Lord, I've, I've told him, tell him again. I'm like, Lord, I've, I said tell him again. I'm like, okay, I'm going to tell him again. So I'm telling you. Every time you see, put that scripture back up there for me. I'm going to show you again. Every time you see the, the next part of it. Every time when you find yourself slipping in your faith, anybody ever found themselves slipping in your faith? When you find yourself slipping in your faith, go over the story again and again, item by item, and it'll shoot adrenaline into your soul. In other words, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. See, that's the thing that if I could get people to understand this, every time you open the book, anytime you come in here to hear a word from the Lord, Either a belief should be established or one you have should be strengthened. You should expect the Holy Spirit to speak to you because the word of God is powerful and it lives inside you if you're born again. The apostle John says you are strong and the word of God abides in you. And see a God fashioned life, it will strengthen us to rise above the failures, the rejection, the discouragement, the condemnation, the opinions of other people, the cares of this world. And what it will do is this, it, it will begin to reproduce his character in us, empowering us to be an expression of him. And you can do it. Listen, here's, the, here's a mistake I think a lot of people, and, and maybe, maybe part of the reason is preacher's fault. But I think a lot of people, Billy, over the years, we've, we've tried to be religious in our approach to be an expression of God. And that's just a turn off to people. I think God wants you to be you. He wants you to be fun. See, Billy, Billy is a big cut up. I, 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 right? I know, right? But when it comes time for him to minister, he's on. But he's going to be on with his style and his personality. He's not going to get up here and teach like me or like Andy. Did you know you're just going to get up? He's like, what? <laughs> like, what? what? <laughs> See, you never know when you're going you're gonna to get the, the calls coming. He's like, oh, I just started, my palms just started sweating, man. <laughs> Be strong, Billy. Be strong. Yeah. See, God, God wants to use every one of us, and he wants to use your personality. He wants Leslie to come up here and do a dance-off. Because, I mean, she'll do it in front of everybody, and she won't care nothing about what you think. She's bold like that. She's like, ah, not, not anymore. Don't call me up today. What God is looking for is that kind of approach with all of us. And when you feel your faith slipping, go back and listen to the stories of Jesus again. Jesus didn't get, he didn't condemn people, man. He met them right where they were. The Apostle Paul, same thing. He met people right where they were. That's the thing you and I have to understand. It, it would be wonderful if every time you invited somebody to church, they all came. Well, we'd have to get our new building now, Right? But they don't, do they? Sometimes they're not going to cross the threshold of this building until you reach them outside this building. You know, one of the coolest things is when you get the opportunity to lead somebody to the Lord and you get them saved before they've ever been in the church. Because see, sometimes, you know what? I say this cautiously, but you know what church can do? Church can mess somebody up, man. Because we get all about us and our stuff and the name on the building. Like, like the lady told Billy a few weeks ago, 
well, we're Baptist. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Great. And then he said, but there is no Baptist section in heaven. And then he just walked, you know, I mean, once you, once you drop something, there's no Baptist section in heaven. They're like, what? <laughs> what are we going to, what are we going to do? I, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, let's keep going. Y'all okay? In Ephesians chapter four, listen to this. Now you have to understand, remember as you, what, what, what Hebrews tells us, you go over the story again and again, and it, it, it will shoot adrenaline into your soul as you grow and you develop and you become stronger. Then and only then will you be able to do what Paul is getting ready to instruct us to do in Ephesians chapter 4. Because this passage, it sounds all good and spiritual, but it's kind of challenging. Listen to it, verse, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 24. Get rid of your old life and take on an entirely new one. Okay, Paul, <laughs> how? That's, that's the whole point that Abraham did. He left everything behind. Now, once again, God's not asking you to, to move. He's asking you to leave that old way. Get rid of your old life and take on an entirely new, new life, a God-fashioned life, a life that is renewed from the inside and it's working itself into your conduct as God accurately, watch this very carefully, as God accurately reproduces his character in you. See, when you willingly, this is one of the things that prayer and fasting will do for your life, is it, it tells your flesh who's in control. Paul said, I crucify my flesh every day. See, when you, when you take some time to pray and fast and separate, now I'm not talking about punishing your body for a month, I'm talking about a day. Now, and I'm not saying that the Lord won't lead you in a, in, a, in a lengthy fast, but my point is this. Start with something simple. Take a day. Leave off a meal and get before the Lord. Because there's only one way you're going to be able to put that old man down. Okay, I, I can tell y'all struggling with this. Let me give you an example. Let me, let me show you how the old man operates, all right? See, for me, I tell on me all the time. You know how, see, when your flesh is used to getting its way, you'll go back for seconds. When your flesh is used to getting its way, you'll tell the server, yeah, bring another basket of bread. Because your flesh is used to getting its way. And until you tell your flesh no, and what fasting does is it tells your flesh, shut up. Oh, my bad, I'm not supposed to say that. Dang. See, fasting tells your body no. And when your body starts listening to your spirit, then you start putting your old man down and you start yielding to the new man. But it's a process, you all. You're not going to just jump up one day and be superstar Johnny Christian. It doesn't work like that. You have to set as clay on the potter's wheel, sometimes for a long period of time. You got to, here's something else. You got to stop allowing all the things around us to be the thing that shapes our identity the most. But we do. Social media, television, the things going on in the world. I mean, sometimes, you know, and especially people that are, quote, responsible. Well, I'm watching the news. Don't say that out loud anymore. There is no such thing. You understand that? That's, that's, that's just a spin propaganda machine. That no, no, there, you want to find out something, you're going to have to search for it these days. You can't, you can't turn on the TV and find truth. They're going to mold and ma manipulate your thinking for the, so that you'll think what they want you to think. Don't buy that junk, man. So you have to stop giving into that stuff and allow Jesus to shape your thinking. That's one of the things I love about the Old Testament. They show us these men and women that were diligent with the things of God. And even when it didn't look like it, didn't feel like it, they saw no, I mean, not even an inkling of confidence in, 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 in this one individual. Remember I told you I was wanting to tell you about earlier? He's the, how many of you heard of Gideon? I love Gideon because Gideon is a lot like a bunch of us. And in Judges 6, God has passed judgment on the people of Israel. And because he did that, the Midianites have come in and taken over Israel. 
Now, see, we can't relate to these kind of situations in America today because no, there's no country coming in and taking over our nation. That's why they're trying to infiltrate from within. Anyway, that's a different message. <laughs> but Israel has been overtaken by the enemy because they rebelled. Remember, they're under the law and they rebelled against the things of God and judgment fell. And so... Judges 6, 11, one day, this is how the message paraphrase, one day the angel of God came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash of the Abizrite, whose son Gideon was threshing wheat in the wine press out of sight of the Midianites. Why? Because they would take everything you had. And so he's hiding, trying to thresh a little wheat, and an angel shows up. And begins to talk to him. And the angel said, God's with you, mighty warrior. And Gideon replies, with me. If God is with... Now, now some of you are going to be, be able to relate to this. Some of you have probably said this in your life recently. If God is with us, why has all this happened? Huh? Where are all the miracles and the wonders that our parents and grandparents told us about? Where's the stuff in the Bible? Yeah. Did not God deliver us from Egypt? The fact is God has nothing to do with us. Gideon's letting the angel know. He's, turned, he's the one that turned us over to the Midians. And the Bible says, I love how it words this because there's an angel talking, but it says this, but God faced him directly. Now, let me stop for a second because Jesus says this, anyone who receives you, receives me. So when you show up and say what God says, who said it? Yeah. And God said to him directly, go in this strength that is yours. Do what? Go. Say go. Go do what? Save Israel. <laughs> I'm talking about a nation, you know, I'm not talking about saving your community, that's great, we, but he, I'm talking about a nation. Go save Israel, Gideon said. Me? Second time he asked that. How and with what could I save Israel? Look at me. My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I'm the runt of the litter. He said, why would you pick me? I am nobody. And God said to him, I'll be with you. Watch this. Believe me. See, there are going to be things that God's going to ask you to do. You're going to have to believe him. You're going to have to make your mind up to believe him, to be strong in him, to live strong in him. See, this is the thing. God is telling Gideon that you are strong in me. You are somebody in me. Remember, that's what he did with Abraham. God made something out of Abraham when he was... Nobody. So like Gideon, I think all of us, we have to get to this place. There's some things that we have to do. Number one is this. We have to accept what God tells us. Number two, we have to believe what God tells us. And then number three, we have to act on what God tells us. See, you've got you to accept it as a truth then you have to believe it and you got to do something about it. You have to believe today that God is with you, that God is going to empower you. See, the thing that, that I've witnessed over the years as a pastor is the majority of Christians, we, we're just so concerned about what somebody in the world is going to think about us because we tell somebody about Jesus. Time for that to change. We need to be bold in who we are. The reason that we don't see some of the great things is because there's no boldness. We're not living strong. We're just living our little blessed life and enjoying our journey. And well, if you make it to heaven, I hope I see you there. And let... No, guys, that has to change. And the only way that changes is by us having talks like this. See, God needs every one of you in your profession to be bold about the things of Jesus. Well, they don't allow me to talk about Jesus on my job. Well, then be bold and wise in the things of God and find an opportunity. If you want to if you want to share the truth, then be real enough to say, "God, I work for this heathen company and they don't know Jesus yet. They run by a bunch of devils and they won't let me talk about you on the job, but I can in the parking lot. So provide me an opportunity." 
and then believe. What did he tell, what did he tell Gideon? Believe me. I don't think we're intentional enough about this stuff. Now, once again, God's not asking you to not have fun with your life, not to enjoy it, not to, not to keep peace at the job. Nothing. He's not saying none of that stuff. But see, sometimes some of us, we, we need a John Baptist moment. We need, to, we need to be out on the backside of the desert just spitting fire. And... No? Okay, we'll just, we'll just keep hoping and praying they make it to heaven. <laughs> no. God hasn't changed, you all. He's still looking for people that'll say yes to him. He's still looking for people that'll be strong. So be open. I got I to gotta get you out of here. Be open to this reality today. If God's going to do something in the earth today, it's going to be through someone that says yes to him. If God's going to do something in the earth today, it's going to be through somebody that says, yes, Lord, I'm your guy. Just like Gideon. Gideon's like, why are you picking me? Obviously, God saw something in Gideon. Did he make a change? Did he accomplish what God said he was going to do? Yeah, but he still had to go do it. You know the man was scared. See, we don't, we don't need God-inspired strength to stay hidden away in our wine press, doing our own thing. We don't need, we don't need any strength for that. What we need strength for is to come up out of there. Come up out of the pit, out of the mess, out of the stuff we're used to. Come up out of the things that we're comfortable with and step out into something new to put down some of those old ways. Why not believe God to use you today? Yeah? See, Gideon is simply reminding us that sometimes our next victory, it's our next level of success, it's going to be outside the place that we're okay with. It's going to be outside what you're used to, what you're comfortable with, what you're, well, I, it's just my happy place, Kate, you know, I, I just want to be here. I think those days are coming to a close, you all. I believe we're living in a time in history where, where the Lord is prepping his church. And I think we need to, to be some candidates that are, that are like, okay, Lord. See, Gideon's simple, seemingly insignificant life, it teaches us that. All of us, if we're willing to trust God and follow his leading, we can, make, we can make changes. God used one dude to change the landscape of a nation. I mean, what if all these people, what if we all started doing something? One guy changed the nation. So don't get, don't get tore up about America. God still got us. Huh? He still honors my prayer. And yours. Yeah. This is why he continually, he repeatedly tells us, live strong. I know I do this a lot. Can, can, I, give you, can I give you one more scripture? You, you're really, you're really going to like this one. <clears throat> because in Philippians chapter 4, now let me set this up. The Apostle Paul, one of the most powerful men of God that you'll ever meet. And he's traveling around all over the world, starting churches. And he goes to Philippi, and he launches this church. And, on, and, uh, and then he's coming back through, and he's writing this letter, because you have to understand, things got so shaky, things got so difficult, that all of Paul's ministry support just dried up, except for Philippi. He said, you are the only ones that continue to support me in my ministry. So he's writing this letter. He's encouraging them because they've gotten frustrated with some things because Paul's, Paul's in jail for preaching, y'all. Right? I, I, I know you might get in Facebook jail for preaching. You might, you know, Twitter might shut you down for a season because you said the wrong thing. But Paul's in jail for preaching the gospel. And he's writing this, he says, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and my crown. He says this, stand fast in the Lord. He said, you know, if you read that whole letter to the Philippian church, 
He's saying the, the whole theme of that thing is joy. He says, rejoice, rejoice all through the book. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And in chapter four, a few verses later, he goes on to say, because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, now let, let me take a second with this because I, I know we'll take this passage and kind of take it and say, oh, well, I can do anything I want in Christ who strengthens me. Well, that's not the case because Paul's in prison. So you can't do anything you want. He says, I can do all things through anything I'm facing. He said, I know how to abase and I know who, how to abound. He said, whatever I'm going through, I'm going through it. I can handle it. I can do all this stuff because Christ strengthens me. See, at the end of the day, you got to have, you, you got to make some room in your thinking for the ways of God. When it comes to living this strong life, you got to get to a place where you trust in him. Your, your, your mind is made up. This is what a strong person is. There are people that have a made up mind. God's got me. Cody, God's got me. Yeah, but Paul, you and you writing a letter in jail, dude. I mean, where's the power at? Come on, isn't that what Gideon said? God, where's all the power? All this stuff's happening. What's, what's up, God? But Paul never said, what's up, God? He said, Lord, I'm in jail. What's up? No, he never said that. He said, I rejoice in the Lord always. He said, when I am weak, he is strong. He told the Philippians, he said, don't you worry about this. He said, this whole prison guard, the things they're doing, they tried to corrupt it and make it bad. He said, but I've turned it around or the Lord's turned it for good. He started leading. He started leading the prisoners to Jesus. See, if you was in a bad situation, would you lead people to Jesus or would you gripe? You know, we would gripe. You know, we would. We gripe, we whine, we complain. Lord, I'm a tither. <laughs> right? Yeah. So once we make our mind up, y'all gonna make some, you gonna make your mind up about some stuff today? See, because the, listen to me very carefully, because the moment you make your mind up, God's gonna give you an opportunity, Gideon. The moment you make your mind up, this week, he's gonna give you an opportunity to, to speak into somebody's life, to reach down and help them, maybe to buy their groceries at the, at the whatever it might, God. But are you ready? Do you have the switch of faith on at all times? You are strong. You don't have to get strong. You're strong. The same God that brought Jesus out of the grave lives in you. Yeah, but I don't feel like it. Well, then quit walking by your feelings. See, once you make your mind up, it's time for two things. Commitment. And determination. Commitment and determination. That's the thing. See, this is what God is looking for in us today. Here's the deal with all of this, though. All this stuff that we talk about, this strength in God, these supernatural acts that he will do, this level of faith, him taking us to. You have to be a child of God. Remember, the world is longing for the sons and daughters of God to show up on the scene. So step one, you got to be one. So if you're in this room today or if you're watching me right now or listening to this thing, whatever you're doing, stop what you're doing right now and give your life to Jesus. Yeah, but I don't like your church. Okay, we'll help you find one you do like. But you're here, you're listening, you're watching. Don't leave here without Jesus today. Okay? Okay. And it's very simple. It's not overcomplicated. Just say a simple prayer. Give Jesus a chance in your life. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know if I agree with how you word the prayer. Okay, then say it your own way. We, we get hung up on some of the most ridiculous things and it gets in, the people's, it gets in people's heads and it, and it just interferes with something that God made so simple. It's a done deal. Paul made it so simple. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and you'll be saved. So we say it like this. We have a simple little prayer. We say it as a church family. And if you're in the room or if you're watching, say the prayer with us. Church, let's all help them. Lord Jesus, come into my life and make me new. And from this day forward, Jesus is my Lord. Heaven is my home. And I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you're here, and you said the prayer, stop at our information desk. We've got a little gift for you. We want to help you in your next steps in your journey of faith. If you're watching or listening, and man, you said the prayer, you got to tell somebody the greatest thing in your life just took place. You're a brand new person. Now, for everybody here, 
Those of you that already know Jesus, it starts today. You are strong. God wants you living strong. That means begin to pray for him to open up opportunities for you to flex your muscle a little bit, man. Yeah? Go out and do and be. Be the Gideons of today. Advance the kingdom of heaven. Amen? I love you all. God bless. Have a great week.